Hello and welcome to another episode of Authentically You. Uh, before we get started today, if you have been tuning in, can you please give this video a like and a subscribe? It helps real people be seen and lets us know that the work that we are doing is value. If it's the first time you're joining us, welcome. I am Anna, the Black Pants Girl, because truly, that is all I wear. It is, if it's the first time joining us, we welcome you. Um, and tonight, I'm going to introduce you to another amazing person living their own truth. I have admired this woman since I first stumbled upon her in a Facebook, I think, thread. And she was just saying all the things that hit home with me. And I thought, I got to know who she is and what she does and all that. So I said, friend request. Let's, 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 let's meet her. Um, and she is just amazing. And I'm going to introduce you tonight to Sybil Bailey. Hi, Sybil. Hi, Anna. Hi. How are you? I'm groovy. I'm really groovy. I appreciate you joining me tonight and telling the world a little about what you do and why you do it and all of that good stuff. Because, okay. You know, I, what I, what I admired about you was your, I'm going to be very honest. I admire women who are intelligent and have a level of sass to go with that. And that okay. just makes me super happy. So, cause that means you own who you are and you are not afraid to put it out there. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so our first question is always, where does the story of you begin? Where are you from originally? Things like that. I am a Knoxville native. I oh, was born wow. overseas because my dad was in the service. I was born in Germany. Okay. Um, but I've been here most of my life. We were only in Germany maybe a year after I was born. Gotcha. And my whole big giant family is in Knoxville as well. Okay. Wow. So um, you get a giant family? I do. I, I'm probably the only childless one. Like I have a lot of cousins. <laughs> And um, they're all here, so that's mm -hmm. nice. Um, yeah. I'm an only child. Uh, I'm married. I'm a mother of cats. That's awesome. I, I love that's fur ridiculous, babies. but it's true. It's no, true. hey, I got I got dogs, so I get it. You know, fur babies are awesome babies. Yeah. They don't so ever, They don't ever talk back. Ever. Ever. I wish they could sometimes, because they'd be so, on my yeah. side. <laughs> Yeah, that would be nice because you'd, you'd, especially when they're in pain, you'd like to know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's true. So you were born in Germany um, and, but, you know, not there for a long time to really like engage in that culture and all that jazz. No, but I always wanted to go back and I will one day. You will. Absolutely. And that's, it's funny because that's where my father is from. So I have been blessed to be there a couple of times. Okay. Um, it's amazing. Go. Seriously. It's, I really it's want to. gorgeous. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know we live right at the foothills of the Smoky Mountains, but there is nothing like being around the Alps where you're like, holy mackerel, that's a mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, I bet those it makes the mountains here look like, like rolling hills. Yeah, pretty much. They're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. You no, know, no, yeah. no shame in our Smoky Mountain game, but not at all. No, <laughs> but there is something about seeing a gigantic, like, whoa, that's, that's a real, that's huge. What is that? Yeah. One yeah. of these days. <laughs> now, did you guys move around a lot because of being, your dad being in the military? They did before me. Oh, before you. Oh, so. Yeah. Okay, that's when here. all the fun happened. <laughs> <laughs> they got to live in a lot of different places. But oh, as soon wow. as I came around, everybody put down roots and stayed still okay yeah well hey at least gave you a very stable kind of place to call home agreed yep absolutely well i'm knoxville is much better for having you for sure i will tell you that um and i know some of the chosen path that you have decided to walk as a person and a professional uh, but tell those who may not know what you do a little bit about that it is going to sound a whole lot of cliche, but I promise it's the truth. I've done <laughs> a lot of different jobs over my lifetime. Um, I worked in an art gallery. I worked in the OR. I worked oh, wow. 
plastic surgeon. I was a makeup artist. And my last job in corporate America was in television in the international division of the company I worked for. Oh, wow. And I loved the people I work with. And it was pretty cool to be able to talk to people all over the world from mm -hmm. little old Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> so I really liked um, where I was working and who I was working with. But there was nothing about my work that really fulfilled me. Gotcha. So when the opportunity came to make a, a switch, I mm -hmm. leapt on it and at 50 rolled into beauty school. Wow. It had been a dream of mine for about 30 years and I didn't think really hard about it because if I had, I probably would have scared myself bad enough to not do it. Right. So I interviewed a couple of places, um, picked a start date and went through it. And it was wow. so much fun. Oh, wow. So it was just it, something that connected with your soul when you finally got there. It really did. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I say, why didn't I do this when I was 20? <laughs> but I don't think I was supposed to do it when I was 20. I think I'm supposed to be doing it right now. Mm -hmm. And it's literally what has kept me from tipping over during these trying times. Yeah. You know, about 50% of my clients cry a little bit while they're here. Not sad, but just, I guess, like release because we're all holding it together and putting our sanest face forward. And yeah. it's very, um, I'm proud that I get to do this kind of work. I cannot believe this is my life. Oh, no, absolutely. And, and the funny thing is, is those, those who look at the beauty industry or the, or, or beauty wellness care and all of that as something that is just sort of, how do I put this? You know how people sometimes get judgy and they say things like, yeah. oh, it's just trivial. You don't need that. No, no, yeah. no, no. It, yeah. it, it is transformative. I like so. it helps women, men, anyone who is struggling just feel a little bit better. It gives you more confidence. It makes you feel whole. I mean, yeah. your face is the face that you see every morning when you wake up and you look in that mirror mm -hmm. and when you're struggling or where you're, when you're going through tough times, your face is going to show it as much yeah. as you would like to pretend that you yeah. put the, the biggest, boldest face out there. You can't always hide the fact that life sometimes gets in the way. Agreed. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people and myself for a lot of years, you can have a long stretch of time when you're single or, you know, where you're not touched. Yeah. And people need touch. Oh, they do. And not to toot my own horn, but beep, beep. There's magic in these hands. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> it's good for your skin. It's good for your self-esteem. It's mm -hmm. good for your spirit. Oh, it is. It is yeah. vital. I mean, they, if you look back at early psychology studies where they did the Skinner, the Skinner box test where they put a baby in like a thing and didn't have a lot of physical contact. Yes. With it's yes. so, it, it, that child will not nurture, that child will not, you know, yeah. thrive because without touch, what, what are, we're, we're a culture that we're, we're a species for lack of a better term that, that thrives on the ability to actually share touch as one of our means mm -hmm. of communication with one another. Yeah. Um, and I am excited as anything to get your hands working on my face because I am, I have, you know, I'm 46 in the last couple of years. And I, I tell, tell my fiance this all the time. I feel like the truck is running over my face more than I'd like it to be at this point. We all think that. And if oh, we could gosh. see our faces through other people's eyes, none of the things that we see, they don't see them. You're probably right on that. Yeah. 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 You are probably hundred percent right. Now you said, you mentioned that, you know, you had this great, 
you know, you had this great job doing the international thing with in the t in the entertainment television industry, and then all of a sudden you realized it just wasn't fulfilling you the way that you felt as a woman. You wanted to have that kind of. I feel like what I'm doing is meaningful to me, and, it, and yeah. it's really it's really feeding my soul, not just me giving out at this point. Mm -hmm. Was there a particular aha moment? Or has it just been a journey for you? I feel like, and you know, maybe it was just getting older. I feel like my work started to be a grind. Yeah, gotcha. Like there were times where I couldn't lift my arm because I was so tensed up and I was grinding my teeth and it was just the pace yeah. of corporate America that was not for me. And there was, you know, there was the encouragement to climb and climb and climb. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to be happy and healthy and sleep at night. Those are and important things. So, yeah. And, you know, it was scary because I made a good living. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that this has all every, the stars have sort of aligned to show me that, this was the path I needed to take because I've also learned recently that I don't need a lot, that I was doing a lot of like frivolous spending and sure. And now in more than just work, I concentrate on things and people that make me happy. Mm -hmm. um, another cliche I used to say, whenever I'd hear somebody say, you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. And I would immediately go <laughs> bullshit. But, <laughs> It's true. Right. I, I skip in here and turn my music up loud and get ready for the day and have made many new friends that yeah. started out as clients. So I, yeah. again, this feels like a fairy tale and I probably should give a shout out to my sweet thing who has been completely supportive in this, but I wouldn't have married somebody that wasn't. I was so. going to say, I didn't see, I didn't see that in you. So yeah, good. You, you married a supporter. That's good. But it's, yeah, it's been a community effort. My friends and family and dozens of coworkers from that corporate job are regular clients in here. That's awesome it is it is amazing I, the love i get i'm so thankful so thankful well i will tell you the reason why they are clients and friends is because you are magnetic i will say that and i'm sure that your magnetism is something you have to also protect because i'm sure there's a lot of people who get attracted to you that are probably a little bit like you know a bit. training we'll training a little bit yeah. every once in a while yeah, yeah. So you got to protect that, but no, I mean, if someone was around you and you said, you know what, I'm going to switch this up and go do my own business and do this. They were like, well, what is it? And can I come join? Can I come and be your client? It literally has been just like that. I mean, they promote me on social media. They yep. come here. They, it's yeah. It, it's only going to get better, I believe. No, that's awesome. So you chose the name for your business as Afro Mermaid, right? Skin, is it Afro Mermaid? Skin care? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I wish there were some grand story to tell about it, but I really like Afros and I really like mermaids. And <laughs> they're both I, cool. Um, you know, there was some discussion. <laughs> right. There was discussion about, you know, should you name it that? Is it gonna maybe alien clients or give the impression that it's only for women with afros? And I thought, well, if people think that, those probably aren't people that should be here anyway. So right. it's worked out. Yep. I, <laughs> I always say out. I always say the right people will find you when you stay true to who you are. It is so true. You know, I, in setting up this business, um, I keep talking about what all everybody's done for me, but my friends gathered around me. Um, I had been talking about Afro mermaid tattoos and Afro mermaid this for years. So one of my yeah. friends who's, uh, who went to high school together and he's a designer. He did all my branding. 
another friend designed my website. That's awesome. A photographer friend took all my images. I mean, this was meant to be for sure. Yeah. Like gifted those things to me. That's awesome. So here we are. Yeah. And the and and I will put a link to your website and also your amazing logo. So they did you very well for sure. Thank they're, you. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Now, when you look at your life and the things that you have achieved, and you mentioned a really valid point where you realize when you finally do what you want to do, you don't, it's not about keeping up with the Joneses and, and, and accumulating things because honestly, at the end of the day, it just means you're going to have a yard sale at some point. That's really yeah. what that means. <laughs> It's yeah. too much. Or stuff. whoever's left here is gonna have to get rid of all of it. Uh, yes, exactly. And I, yeah. So and and I have a father who is in his almost ninety, and has gonna. I don't want to even think about that house. But that's a whole other story for another. Gotcha. Day. That's a episode. That's another episode. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but when you think about your working life or your professional life, is there something that you? hold on to that makes you feel a sense of personal accomplishment when you think about something that you have sort of met or it could be a work in progress that you're working on gosh you know <laughs> it's not anything profound that, you know what you'd be surprised though what you may not see as profound other people might be like you know what? i never thought about that you know i was a bit wild in my 20s okay i did not expect to see 50. i wasn't sure <laughs> how it would happen but this is a true surprise for me yeah you know what um uh, surviving and being healthy and happy yeah is the thing i hold on to because i didn't always think that and i don't right. know if i were just a debbie downer or you know i i came of age in the in the AIDS crisis and there was lots of troubling things in the world back then. Oh, yeah. I didn't think I'd live this long and here I am. So I hold on to health and happiness. I think those are, um, I think those are extremely good achievements. I mean, yeah. who, I mean, at the end of the day, when you look back on your life, you want to say, I'm, I'm really happy about what I've done and what I've lived through and where I've come and, how I've come through it and at the you know like I said to somebody recently I said at the end of the day when you are saying your last goodbyes to people no one's going to talk about what your political stance is no one's going to talk about you know all the stuff that went wrong they're going to talk about what went what went right they're going to talk about hopefully you haven't had a lot of regrets in life you know what I mean things like that it's it's about it's about the real stuff it's not about the, the the stuff that at the end of the day when it all washes away matters you know? for sure and you know we've been told some semblance of that our whole lives but the mm -hmm. older you get the more you believe that so yeah. it's absolutely. so true yeah. yeah i actually think um i think that aging is a beautiful thing that us as women go through um and and i mean this in every way shape and form and and i've said this on a for another interview before that if we had our whole head game together at the same time that our body was together unstoppable yeah no that no one would stand a chance i mean you know that's just life and so it, it has to balance <laughs> that's why it doesn't work that way <laughs> yeah it, it has to balance itself out a little bit because our head games aren't really together in the 20s they're just all yeah. about everybody pleasing everybody making everybody happy you know you're doing things for different reasons and you know mm -hmm. and then you get older and you're like you know what does this even serve me yeah, yeah. It, does this nourish my soul no yeah you know i was lucky enough to have the kind of mother who taught me from a very young age you the goal is to do what you want to do as much of the time as you can and not hurt anybody. Yep. So I was never one of those girls or women who said I probably should. That's you know? a good, yeah. 
Yeah, so I would say, when people would say, do you want to? And I'd say, no. And they'd say, why? And I'd say, because I don't want to. Right. It's kind of simple. But yeah, I think being older, has I've gotten better at that. And I <laughs> do what makes me happy. Absolutely, as you should. And if it makes you not feel good or makes you not feel happy, I agree with you. I don't want to. Yeah. And not to yeah. be afraid to say, I don't want to. Yeah. Because I think a lot of girls are, a lot of younger women are afraid to say that. They're just afraid like, oh, I'll, I'll seem like I don't want to go. I'm not a, I'm not a people person or I'm not a joiner. Or I'm not, you know, they're going to think that I don't. And at work, like I'm not a team player. And the, yeah. Yep. But and if it doesn't. see it all the time on postcards. No is the whole answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And stand <laughs> by it without having to give any. Yeah additional feedback on it I yeah. just said no it's all right that it's takes good. practice that takes practice I still find myself sometimes <laughs> saying oh sorry and there's nothing to be sorry for right or saying no because and just no yeah yeah no is okay yeah mm -hmm. and no is a sign of I would definitely say wisdom and and confidence no is for okay sure. no is 100 percent sure. okay i agree yeah now if you could go back though and give your younger self a little bit of advice if you had the chance yeah what would you, what advice would you give them and i ask this question because typically there's somebody who watches this who probably needs to hear that same advice you i would I tell my younger self to drink more water <laughs> wear sunscreen yep. and relax just calm down <laughs> just well, breathe a little bit like none of this stuff and breathe none of this stuff is, is as important as you think it is right yeah yeah and that that is true i think a lot of us don't realize that until much later in our lives that it says don't sweat the that what's that what's that book don't sweat the small stuff and and by the way most of it's small stuff you're like oh yeah, yeah. you're like if, if i could have written that book we'd be millionaires by now but I absolutely I didn't i'd be somewhere getting a facial yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i will definitely say um you know, at the end of the day, I think you finding the path that you wanted to walk is the most important thing about you feeling the way you do now as a woman, just actually putting it out there, doing the work that, you know, helps others because it's a huge, I definitely think of it's more of a, it's therapy. I feel like it may be because, you know, yeah. kind of like when you're at the salon getting your hair done and you tell that person everything, yep. there's some secrets here in the vault. Yeah. Oh, of course yeah. there is. There's so that level of intimacy that goes yeah. with what you do. And, and, you know, you probably, I don't know if you ever thought that that was going to be part of what you would be doing. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I mean, it makes sense that it is. And yeah. I mean, I'm sort of like that myself. So I don't know why I didn't think about it. Right. But yeah. I'm, I'm thankful that people are relaxed enough to unburden themselves because it's with the really good and the really bad. And I take that uh, very seriously. It's a, it's a gift for somebody to share stuff like that with you. It is. It really is. There's a level of trust there. Mm -hmm. that that honestly like you said it is a gift and when it shows up sometimes it's a gift that takes you completely um by surprise yeah you know because you will meet many people i'm sure who are in your hands that are very closed off in the beginning and mm -hmm. and then you know from working with them for as long as you do not even just on that first session but multiple sessions you've yeah. seen that person change so so much for sure relax, you know which is for sure yeah that's the most beautiful thing about the work that i that you do and and that's why i i cannot wait to get 
my checkbook in order so I can come visit you for sure. And that's Sue. Your it's time. happening. Love it. <laughs> I love it. Love it. So we are going to end today's interview with the 10 questions that were um, made famous by Bernard Pivot, who is a French um, interviewer. And a lot of people know them from James, Lip James Lipton's Inside the Actor Studio. Absolutely, James I Lipton. Love I had no idea they weren't he is. Yeah, no, I know, right? Because he, yeah. he said it with such confidence and it yeah. always just is how he ended it. And I always liked it because it's the things you don't really know about. Yeah, but you want to once you yeah. hear it. <laughs> these are the juicy questions. All right, my dear. So these are quick okay. fire. I want you to just free associate off them and don't overthink it. All right. What is okay. your favorite? What is your favorite word? Kindness. Good word. What's your least favorite word? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> said exactly like that that's nice yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what turns you on creatively mm -hmm. spiritually like or eventually beauty Ooh. that's mm -hmm. that's true what turns you off public restrooms Oh, I'm gonna agree with you. I never That's thought my about that. That's my kryptonite. <laughs> You're probably like, no, I'm gonna wait. I'm good. Uh -huh. yeah. I have a bladder this big. <laughs> I used to be good at that. Oh, I was the same way. I would be like, I'll just make it make it till I get home. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. 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 What is uh this is honestly my favorite question, and I don't know why some people get nervous about it, but what's your favorite curse word? Fuck. Honestly, I don't know why it's not everybody's, because it's the most universal. I, I feel like it should be. It's a yes. noun. It's a verb. Yes. It's yes. everything. It's an adjective. It is, it, it is, yeah, it's good. I, I agree. What sound or noise do you love? Oh, purring. Oh, yeah. it's such a good sound. Oh, it it's is. that happy I wish sound. Do it. It's a happy, contented yeah. sound. Mm -hmm. oh, I love it. What sound or noise do you hate? Oh, no. This is rapid fire. What sound oh, or noise fine. do I hate? The toilet flushing. The toilet yeah, flushing. I have now. bathroom issues. <laughs> but like we may have uncovered something great here. We don't know. This, this could be a yeah, yeah yeah. This could be big. Yeah, a breakthrough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I think I think I'm going to know the answer to this next question because you're already doing it. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? You know, if I were not doing this right now, I would love to be like a travel food writer. You, yeah. I love to eat, but I, I'm not a great cook. And I fancy myself a bit of a writer, too. Yeah. Well, that would yeah. be an amazing job. Yeah, I think that's yeah. great. What, what profession would you never want to do? I have a feeling it I would never, that. ever want to be an attorney. Ooh, that yeah yeah i could yeah yeah it that's just a, it's it just stresses me out just saying the word it's yeah. a lot it is yeah. a lot i'm glad they do it but i would never no <laughs> we need them but that's not for yes. us no for sure no. No. <laughs> and now you have reached the end and you have been so delightful and everything that i ever wanted to having an interview with you i was so excited to do this because we have yet to meet personally face to face so that's yeah. going to happen soon but lastly Good. if heaven exists what would you like to hear god say when you arrive at the pearly gates you can absolutely smoke pot here <laughs> ah! <laughs> 
that is I am sure that that will be said a hundred. I feel like it's I feel like it's going to be a given. Yes. Oh yeah, no, for sure. And you know, honestly, that that's part of that's part of what that is afterwards, because you know <laughs> that sense of calm and joy, and it'll only yeah. be the good stuff. It will only be the good stuff. The stuff there that does will not be cause paranoia no in any way. Because <laughs> that's not heaven pot. I mean, you know what I'm saying. No. What I'm saying. Yes. So yes, that's a real. Yes. That's real. Yes. And that's totally, I, I believe that that will be said. No, no question. I have no question in my mind. This well, was Dimble, fun. It has been a absolute delight getting to talk to you today. And I want to thank you so much for being, you know, the effervescent person that I expected you to be in every way. And Good. also the healer, because there's so much that I think that you shared that we take for granted when we think about <clears throat> people who care for us in a physical way, it, it's, it's so much deeper than that. And it reaches so much more depth of us as the person who's sitting in a chair on a table in your hands. We, we experience it when we're there. We experience it when we walk out and we take that selfie or we, look in the mirror but I think reminding ourselves of how good it feels to be cared for mm -hmm. in that way is really what all of this is about and yeah. being kind to yourself and I want you to live as beautifully rich a life as you possibly can and you know what you need to just get out there and start food blogging and stuff no matter what if that's going to be Just part of your journey, do it. Eat it and write it down. That's exactly right. Because you know what? I will follow along and then I will find where you ate and I will go eat it myself. Okay. I'll tell you that. So that's that's going to be our, our contract with each other. That's the plan. You go eat beautiful meals and then tell me where you went. Okay. <laughs> oh, that my dear. This is This has been a, a beautiful episode of Authentically You. And I just want to thank Sybil Billy from Afro Mermaid in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I don't know, maybe you'll go worldwide someday. You'll be taking care of people no matter where they, hey, just remember if someone's willing to pay you and you want to go there, I mean, hey. Gone, thing. for sure. <laughs> and this has been Authentically You. Good night. Bye, everybody. See, it was good. Oh, God. I'm so hot. <laughs>